To get regular updates, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon. Hello friends, this is Manohar Veera from Exam Pain. In this session, we are going to see about Indian Physiography in the Geography Learning Series. Before going further, please subscribe to the channel to get latest updates from us. Okay, let's get started. India can be divided into six major physical divisions. The Northern Mountains, the North Indian Plain, the Peninsular Plateau, Great Indian Desert, the Coastal Regions and the Islands. First in the list is the Northern Mountains, that is Himalayas. The Himalayan Mountains form the Northern Mountain region of India. They are the highest mountain ranges in the world. These mountain ranges start from Pamir Nath in the west and extend up to Puravanchal in the east. Himalayas are the youngest and loftiest mountain range of the world. It is formed by the tectonic forces and it ranges up to 2400 km in length. Himalayas are there in varying widths. 400 km in Kashmir to 160 km in Arunachal Pradesh. Altitudinal variations are greater in the eastern part than in the western part. Himalayas' prominent features are highest peaks, deep valleys and gorges and glaciers. The major peaks of Himalayas are Mount Everest, K2 Gorbinastin, Kanjanjanga. The Mount Everest is of 8,848 meter, which is the highest peak in the world. The Himalayan mountains can be further divided into four major ranges. 1. Trans Himalayas. It is the immediate to the north of the Great Himalayan range. Most of the part of this Himalayan range lies in the Tibet and hence also called Tibetan Himalaya. Its ranges are Zaskar, K2 Garvinastin, Ladakh, Kailash and Karakoram range. 2. Greater Himalaya that is known as Inner Himalaya. Always covered with snow, hence it is known as Himadri. The average height is 6000 meters. It is the most continuous range. Its core composed of granite and its ranges are Mount Everest and Kanjanchunga. Greater Himalayas is the needle-leaved coniferous forest type. Middle Himalaya. The average height of Middle Himalaya is 3500 to 4500 meters. Most of the valleys and hill stations are located in this range. That is Kashmir, Kathmandu, Nainital, everything is located within the Middle Himalaya range. The ranges are Pir Panjal, Dawladar, Mahabharat. Middle Himalaya is a broad-leaved evergreen forest type. The outer Himalayas, which is otherwise known as Shivalik Range or Himachals. The average height of outer Himalayas are 600 to 1200 meters. Most of the Dun doors are located in this range. The examples are Dehradun, Patli Dun, and this is a deciduous type forest. Let's see some of the important details about Purvanchal or Eastern Hills. Brahmaputra marks the eastern border of the Himalayas. Beyond the Dihang Gorge, the Himalayas bend sharply towards south and form the eastern hills at Purvanchal which run through the northeast India and are mostly composed of sandstones. These hills comprise of Mishmi Hills, Patkai Hills, Naga Hills, Manipuri Hills and Mizo Hills. The classification of Himalayas and the basis of geographic location is four types, four classifications actually. The first one is Punjab Himalayas or Kashmir Himalayas or Himachal Himalayas. It is, uh, uh, it is there between the Indus and Sutlej. The second one is Kumain Himalayas. It is there between Sutlej and Kali rivers. Third one is Nepal Himalayas, which is there between Kali and Tista rivers. The last one is Assam Himalayas, which is there between Tista and Dihang rivers. The significance of Himalayas for India is strategic significance. It acts as natural frontier of India with the other countries. For example, with China, Pakistan and Afghanistan, it acts as a natural frontier. It has climatic significance because it prevents further northward movement of summer monsoon and also prevent cold northern winds from Siberia to enter into India. Its agricultural significance includes 
Rivers from Himalayas deposit a lot of sediment on its foothold, from which are formed India's most fertile agricultural grounds known as Northern Plains. Its economic significance includes huge hydroelectric power potential of Himalayan rivers and Himalayan timbers. Himalayan herbs are world famous now and it has so many medicinal plants within it. It also has tourism significance because of it comprises of large ecological biodiversity and natural views and its hill stations all through the Himalayas. Next we are going to see about the Northern Indian Plains. The North Indian Plain formed by depositional work of rivers like Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra. The Northern Plain is approximately 2400 km long and it is varying in width from 240 to 320 km approximately. The Northern Indian Plain divided into three sections, the Punjab Plain, the Ganga Plain and the Brahmaputra Plain. The Punjab Plains formed by the Indus and its tributaries with major portion of these plains is in Pakistan. The Ganga Plains is in between Gagar and Tista rivers which is currently Haryana, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and part of Jharkhand and West Bengal are the primary parts of Ganga Plain. The Brahmaputra Plains from Tista to Dihang with major portion lying in Assam. The four major subdivisions of Northern Plains are Babur, Tarai, Kadar, and Bangar. The Babur lies along foothills of Shiva lakes from Indus to Tista. It is led down by streams coming from hills and comprises of pebble studded rocks, highly porous bed plain. Due to high porosity, streams are getting disappeared here. Tarai lies south of Babur and runs parallel to it. It is marked by re-emergence of underground streams of Babar Belt. It is highly alluvial and agricultural land. It has a high water table due to groundwater percolating down from the adjacent zone. Kadar Flood plains with newer alluvium deposited by flood almost every year. Kadar marked with fertile soil. It is the zone of intensive agriculture and the Kadar range is of non-porous clear and loamy. Bangar is an alluvial terrace lying above the level of flood plains. It is composed of the oldest alluvial soil. Bangar region contains kankar that is lime modules, pebbles and gravels. The region is coarse in nature. The soil of the region is locally known as kankar that is calcareous concretions. With this we have come to the end of this session. We have only seen the two important divisions of Indian physiography. We will be seeing the rest of the divisions in our next video by next week. Thank you for watching till then, subscribe to our exam channel and get new video lessons every day.